Xiaomi, a brand that needs no introduction, finally made it to Europe. A week ago, the first European Mi store opened its doors in my hometown Vienna. The store is operated by an official distributor and the opening event reminded me of an Apple Store launch event. So in today's episode of The Truth About, we'll have a closer look at the Xiaomi hype and how the European market compares to the Chinese market. So two weeks ago I traveled to China to do some business and have a closer look at the industry and how smartphone brands evolve in China. Now Xiaomi is often called the Apple of China because it evokes a similar kind of hype in China as Apple does in the US. But the Apple comparison doesn't end here. Xiaomi's founder and CEO Lai Yun is also referred to as the Steve Jobs of China. And when I went through the streets of China, I saw in Xiaomi, Vivo, Oppo store literally every couple of minutes. It's really incredible how many stores there are, and even more incredible if you have a closer look at the product lineup. However, even though those stores look official, most of the shops are not since Xiaomi mostly sells online to keep their costs low. While Xiaomi may be selling an incredible number of phones, the company makes very little profit compared to others. The company's 2017 revenue is estimated to be between 17 and 18 billion USD, with a net profit of at least 1 billion USD. So Xiaomi's profits are estimated to double in 2018 to around 2 billion dollars. Compared to Apple, that are relatively low margins and sales, but for Xiaomi this is just the start and now they are expanding to Europe with the low cost devices. Xiaomi is presently the world's fifth largest smartphone maker and Xiaomi's products include smartphones, laptops and related consumer electronics like power banks. All the devices have reasonable good quality and Mi as a brand is growing in popularity. But why are Xiaomi Redmi phones so cheap even with high specs? Now first of all, Xiaomi decided to sell almost exclusively online to bypass distributors and third-party retailers, both of which seek profits of their own and inflate the price. Also, the price of an average Xiaomi smartphone drops at least two or three times during the product life cycle. But why are these price cuts possible? Because the hardware component costs drop down the road, especially in an industry as heavily characterized by rapid improvements in technology. This means that the core of the Xiaomi phone costs significantly less half a year later, allowing for equally significant savings that in turn let the company go for a price cut. Importantly, Xiaomi continues to sell older devices and tweaked versions of them at reduced prices even after it releases newer models. Xiaomi is also not only a mobile company. When you buy a Xiaomi smartphone, it usually comes with a few apps, which you may not require. These apps are of non-removable nature, at least in general. Over a period, people start using these apps and Xiaomi makes money from the advertisements which they are placing inside the apps or paid services. The company also does not advertise their phones on any kind of media like TV or radio and in my whole YouTube career I've never received a smartphone from Xiaomi directly, just from a bunch of retailers. This saves a lot of money from the company. At the same time the company only sells the phones online without selling it at local stores or retail stores such as Flipkart, Amazon, Snapdeal and the official Mi store. This eliminates the margins of all types of middlemen and this is the biggest reason for its low cost. But why have they opened up now stores across Europe? Well because the Chinese companies now start to realize that Europe works very different than China. When I was in China I was surprised how far technology reaches into their daily life. Most of the people don't carry any cash at all. Everything gets paid via WeChat and I even had issues buying stuff with my credit card. All this is very different to the lifestyle of people in Europe. And I've also visited the Chinese electronic market and our guide and good buddy Jackie told us that in the early days it was so crowded that you could barely breathe. But right now the market appears really empty. All the sales are switching to online channels as they are cheaper and save costs. This is a little bit sad because I really love the atmosphere of the electronic market which is still huge but it's decreasing in size every year and most of the people just start selling on Alibaba. 
The senior vice president responsible for Xiaomi's international business also said that the company has many, many customers in Spain, the UK, Germany and Italy. So it's a very effective market. And first of all, they want to make Spain successful and then expand to other markets. He said that they want to learn from the customers about the taste of European people, which I think is very important. And in fact, even though Amazon is growing like a rocket, people in Europe prefer buying from shops or companies in Europe, so that they have a responsible person or company for warranty as well. Xiaomi is also saving costs where it matters in production. Over the lifetime of a product, they can increase quantities and also get a better deal with the supplier and in the end, they will end up with better margins than they actually started with. I visited Dongguan in Shenzhen in China and we had a look at some factories. Not Xiaomi factories, but those assembly factories give you a good insight on how your smartphone or power bank is actually made. And even though you may won't believe it, it requires more human work than you will ever think. For sure machines are manufacturing the single parts, but most of the time they have to be put together by humans and I have great respect for these people since it looks like a very very exhausting job. Now Xiaomi started assembling phones in India back in 2015, committing to the government's Make in India initiative. And now the company is announcing that it's launching three new smartphone manufacturing facilities in the country. The three new smartphone plants, in partnership with Foxconn, now employ more than 10,000 people, of which more than 95% are women. So with an overall market share of 26.8%, Xiaomi is also the number one player in the online smartphone segment, with 57% market share and the number two smartphone player in the offline space, with 11.2% market share in India. Soon they will also focus on Europe and I'm very excited and a little bit scared on what will happen to the smartphone market when they do. So that was another episode of The Truth About. I really hope that you liked it and if you did, please like this video. And if you want to see more from my trip in China, please subscribe. I'm Steven from Tech Magnet and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a nice day.